Wang Jiajai is an island village on Lake Baiyangdian, North China's largest wetland ecosystem. Here, thousands of reed-lined channels create a maze of interconnected lakes, which play a crucial role in regulating the region's climate, reducing floods, and preserving biodiversity. It also cleans the notoriously polluted rivers that flow through it, leading some to call it the kidney of the North China Plain. Every day, Hu Quanguo comes to this bank to feed his cormorants, birds trained to catch fish. The waters have receded dramatically. Born and raised on its shores, Hu has seen Lake Baiyangdian dry up steadily before his eyes. Since the late 1960s, Lake Baiyangdian has shrunk by more than one-third to its current size of less than 140 square miles. It has dried up frequently. According to Wei Jirmin at the Hebei Provincial Department of Water Resources, droughts did not start to hit regularly until recent decades. Located about 100 miles southwest of Beijing in Hebei province, Baiyangdian is part of the High River System, the largest river basin on the North China Plain. The basin is naturally dry during the winter, but the summer brings heavy monsoons. About 80% of the water replenishing the lake comes from summer rainfall, causing constant floods that devastate villages like Wang Jiajai. Memories of the high's deadly flood are still vivid in Xin's mind. The flood took more than 5,000 lives and left another 10 million homeless. It spurred Mao Zedong to call for permanent control of the high river. Over the following decade, the Chinese state mobilized more than a million peasants to fortify riverbanks and build spillways, dams, and canals along its tributaries. The high river was tamed, but droughts started to hit regularly. Dam construction has continued since the 60s. Now more than 1,900 dams scatter the High River Basin, more than 100 of them upstream of Lake Baiyangdian. But according to Wei Jirmin, dams are just one of the many factors that have caused the lake to shrink. The annual rainfall of Hebei province has dropped nearly 20% since the 1950s, whereas the temperature of the area has risen by about 2.5 degrees Fahrenheit. Over the same period, the population of the region has doubled. Much of the water has been held in reservoirs upstream to meet growing demand. Along the banks of the river, farmers, the region's biggest consumers of water, are reclaiming wetlands to grow their crops. Groundwater, the other key source for replenishing the lake, 
is being excessively extracted for irrigation. Pollution has compounded the damage caused by drought. A few miles west of the lake, Dead crops stretch up the bank of the New Tong Channel, separated from the lake only by a sluice gate. The 11-mile sewer was built in the 70s to contain sewage and industrial waste from Baoding, a city upstream with a population of 10 million. Massive fish kills have occurred repeatedly on Lake Bayangdian since the 80s. In August of 2012, more than 300 acres of farmed fish, mostly grass carp, died in a matter of days. People who depend on the wetlands for their livelihood are now finding new ways to survive. Over a million tourists visit the lake every year. Each summer, locals reenact historic guerrilla battles waged against the Japanese during World War II. Since 2006, in a desperate bid to save Baiyangtian, Chinese authorities have diverted murky water from the already stressed Yellow River to replenish the lake. An official report in 2012 from China's Ministry of Environmental Protection shows much of the lake's water quality is worse than grade five, or too toxic even to touch. Local authorities in Baoding also vow to curb pollution. Hundreds of polluters have been shut down in recent years. But given the scale of the lake's problems, it's hard to say what full recovery would look like. Today, in Shinganjin's village, two celebrations, a funeral or a white affair, and a wedding or a red affair, are both underway on the same street. <laughs> the music is more than 500 years old. It dates back to the Ming Dynasty. Families of the newlyweds and of the deceased hold a 12-course banquet celebrating the end of life and a new beginning. For centuries, local people have depended on the waterways. If they can't stay afloat, China will have lost more than a way of life, for caught on what remains of Baiyangdian's spoiled and receding waters is a reflection of the land that surrounds it, and it will take hard work to wash it clean. <laughs> <laughs>